joined again today uh, by Sam Cherry from Bombardier. Sam, just quick recap of what's your role at Bombardier and how you're involved in the C-Series program. So, Mr. Shang, uh, uh, I'm the Director of Program Planning, Development and Customer Requirements. Uh, our departments are basically the, uh, the go-between between between the customer and the engineering department. So we make presentations, technical presentations to our customers, and then we bring the feedback uh, from our customers back into the company so that our engineers ca can actually uh, work all these wonderful ideas into the end product. Great. So now we are going to go for a deep dive for an Aviation Geeks special into the C-Series. Why don't you tell us a little about the aircraft by exploring the touchscreen? So, um, thanks again for the opportunity. Let's just take uh, five to ten minutes to look at the key features of C-Series. Sure. Uh, which is the uh, single most advanced uh, narrow-body aircraft that's in development today. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's just look at the advanced technology features that we have. Sure. Uh, and the first uh, key feature would basically be the complete structure of the aircraft. Right. Uh, we have decided for, for weight reasons to use advanced materials. And 70% of that structure will be uh, uh, made of these advanced materials. Uh, let's just explore that a little bit more. Sure. Uh, the advanced materials we're using would be carbon fiber, advanced composites, uh, for the wing, for the underbelly fairing, for the empennage of the aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, and for the nacelles. How does that help? Um, advanced composites, uh, as everyone is well aware, actually uh, drives the weight of the aircraft down. Uh, it's very difficult on, on a, uh, to actually estimate the, the weight per component, but we're actually looking at 15 to 20 percent weight reduction mm -hmm. on today's materials such as conventional aluminum. And where are all these parts made? Are these all being made by Bombardier here in Canada or is it a global team? How does that work? The wings are actually being made by our sister company in Belfast, Short Brothers in Belfast. Okay. Uh, Short Brothers have had a history of about 40 years in composites. Wow. And uh, for this particular wing, we have developed a, a brand new patented system called Resin Transfer Infusion. And uh, if you come back someday, we, w we could do a blog on that possibly. <laughs> sure. And I can uh, give you some more information on that. Uh, for the, the empennage, uh, we are actually doing it in-house. For the vertical and horizontal stab stabilizer, we are employing Alenia, who are the company are actually doing uh, similar components for the 787. And are they here in Canada? Or? No, Alenia are in Italy. Italy, okay. Yes, correct. Oh, so it's really a global team of suppliers then? Very much a global team. Right. The fuselage, we are actually we have uh, decided to use an advanced aluminum lithium. Um, this is a, a material that it's uh, somewhere in the region of eight to ten percent lighter than conventional aluminum today. Mm -hmm. It has uh, it is lighter uh, from a density perspective. It has better corrosive uh, properties mm -hmm. um, and better fatigue properties. So because of all of that, bringing all that together, uh, we can get this uh, eight percent weight saving over today's materials. And I'm guessing all of these weight savings and technological advancements have a lot of good environmental impact as well. Absolutely. Everyone right. knows that a pound of weight saved is, is worth so much to, to the airlines and also that pound of weight doesn't have to travel right. around with the aircraft over the 30 years. So why don't you run us uh, through some of the environmental features of the Absolutely. plane itself. So let's look at the environment uh, in, these, uh, in this aircraft, the features. First of all, uh, we are burning a significant, uh, significantly less fuel than the aircraft that are already out there today. Whether or not those aircraft are in production, we are 20% uh, more efficient than mm -hmm. those in production aircraft. Or if the aircraft are out of production, uh, on average we are 40% more uh, well. fuel efficient than the out of production aircraft. And in fact, in some of the really older aircraft, we're up to 75% more fuel efficient. And how does this efficiency come about? One, one is the structure itself. What else is um, you know, key? The second part of the efficiency comes from there, there are several key elements. About right. half of this uh, efficiency comes from the engine itself. Mm -hmm. So it's a game-changing engine. It's a turbofan engine, but employing a gearbox. A gearbox allows us to actually push the bypass ratio up from normally uh, 6 to 8 up to a full 12 to 1 ratio. Right. Uh, and from that uh, high bypass ratio, you get a lot of fuel economy uh, mm -hmm. within this engine. Sure. Uh, second feature of the aircraft would be the aerodynamics. 
mm -hmm. uh, of the earth. And, um, we are utilizing the latest generation three-dimensional computational fluid dynamics to design the aircraft. What does that mean? <laughs> and that actually means that we are able to, to tune the actual shape of the wings, of the horizontal stabilizer, of the vertical stabilizer, of just about every part of the aircraft to be mm -hmm. more efficient from a, a drag perspective. So less drag, less fuel burn. Sure, sure, that's great. What about uh, noise reduction? I've heard that this plane really doesn't make a lot of noise. Wow, well, that's, that's <laughs> another key feature of our aircraft. Um, with the high bypass ratio, uh, right. you actually reduce significantly the noise. Uh, right. So let's just have a, a, a look at that. Our aircraft um, is four times quieter than aircraft that are out there today. So what we're looking at is a picture of the, the noise footprint of a 70 decibel uh, noise control around an airport. Mm -hmm. The particular airport we're looking at is Charles de Gaulle. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that the outer blue line right. is actually the noise footprint of a current in production, and a fairly latest generation aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the inner green line is uh, a noise, similar noise footprint of the C series aircraft, right? Uh, and if you compare the two areas, there's a four to one reduction, so right. four times uh, more quiet. Can we listen to the noise as well? Sure, we can actually do that. We have this little uh, uh, feature. So uh, together with our engine supplier, uh -huh. uh, we have developed this uh, little simulation of, of the noise. Okay. And what you have to imagine is an aircraft actually flying uh, from from your extreme light, right? Okay. Uh, overhead and then flying away from you again. Okay. And we're going to listen to simultaneous noise bites. First of all, of a CFM engine, mm -hmm. uh, followed by the GTF. And engine. which is yours? Uh, on ours is a GTF. The okay. CFM would be on existing products. Today. Okay. Sure. So let's just have a quick look at this. So that's the CFM, followed by the GTF, CFM, GTF. All the time, it's getting closer. CFM, GTF. CFM, GTF. It's right overhead. Now it's flying away from the right. You can see the tremendous reduction in noise. Right. Certainly. Oh, well, that and was you, a good demo. And you can also hear it. Right. So going back to technology, um, let's look at the other aspects. So we've talked a bit about the structure. Right. We've talked a little bit about the engines. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the uh, superior field performance and range capability. Right. This aircraft uh, has a capability of, of uh, taking off from London City, which uh, is an extremely difficult mm -hmm. airport to actually mm -hmm. operate into. And right. But it also has a range of uh, some of the uh, more conventional aircraft today up to about 2,800 nautical miles. So where would that get me from, say, Toronto? From Toronto, that will get you anywhere in, in North America. Um, okay. Basically, it's a transcontinental aircraft. Okay. Um, it, it's coast to coast mm -hmm. uh, in any condition against winds or whatever. So we can do a Los Angeles to Boston? Non-stop? Non-stop, no problem. Okay. No, that, no problem. That's great. And because of the, the environmental aspects of, of this aircraft, uh, you can get into some of the more noise-sensitive airports. In the right. UK. So that would certainly work for you know airports with lots of population around it and suburban. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Uh, this, this aircraft is actually um, what we call a curfew-busting aircraft. <laughs> uh, because it's so quiet, we right. can actually get in and out uh, before the, the curfew start. Right. Okay. That's great. And when, when does the plane go into service again? This plane goes into service in 2013, uh -huh. uh, at the latter part of 2013. Right. Uh, it will come into service in the form of the 110 version, the CS100. Right. And 12 months thereafter, we will have the CS300, uh, the 130 passenger version. Well, great. I can't wait to be on board. Uh, thanks a lot, Sam, for joining us on Simplifying. And I wish you all the best with this. Thank you.